Hello, ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Today, we're going to talk about how to set up your underwater camera and housing when you're at a new dive site, or you're at a new dive destination, or just don't know what the dive conditions will be. I'm gonna share four different strategies or four different approaches for setting up your camera in that situation. It's a funny topic because I think about this before nearly all of my dives and have adapted my camera gear for that and even my dive gear, which changes depending on the type of dive day I'm doing. So I'm glad you guys put those comments in below. Keep those comments coming because I'll answer them in videos like this. So I kind of feel like we're forgetting something. New dive sites are just really exciting. I think scuba diving is one of those activities where we can dive at a popular dive destination, at a popular dive site, and still feel like we're the first group to explore that site, to swim across the reef, and to see some of that marine life. I always recommend talking to your dive guide, your dive instructor, or the dive operator to try and figure out what conditions to expect at that dive site or in that dive region in general. Now, as most of us know, this information is covered in dive briefings right before the dive, but as photographers, we often need to know that way in advance because our camera is set and packed and oftentimes on the boat before we get that dive briefing. So if you don't have a chance to talk to your dive instructor, or sometimes if you feel they're saying you might see everything, big subjects, small subjects, visibility could be variable, then you still don't know exactly how to set up your camera. So I'll share these four approaches now, which will hopefully give you that strategy on setting up your camera to come home with good photos. So we'll talk about macro, we'll talk wide angle, we'll talk about zoom lenses, and we'll talk about water contact optics. The first way, and often the safest way, to set up your underwater camera is to set up for macro. We know that whether we have 100 foot great visibility or really poor visibility, we can shoot macro photos. It could be dark and stormy, or it could be nighttime, and we can still shoot macro photos when we might not get the wide angle photos we want or be really challenged to shoot those wide angle photos. So macro is a great way to set up your camera. The only time you might not want to set up your camera for macro is if you're somewhere where there are a lot of currents and when you're with a dive group who might not stop in that current to allow you to sit and wait and compose a macro photo. If that's the diving you're doing, then you may want to opt for wide angle and leave macro aside until you can get out of that current and find some time to shoot. The other cool thing with macro diving is that you can pop a GoPro or another action camera on top of your underwater housing and that way you can shoot your macro photos but still hit that record in a wide angle field of view on top of your housing if you do see that elusive marine life come by. Maybe it's a whale shark or something. So macro is generally a great way to set up your camera. The second way you can set up is to go big, go brave, and set up wide angle. Put that fisheye lens on and hope for the best. Realistically, we're traveling a lot to dive, oftentimes to tropical destinations where we know we're going to get pretty decent conditions, pretty decent visibility, and we're going there for the photo subjects if we're, we're dedicated photographers. So I see no reason not to set up for wide angle. It's true you might be challenged on some dives where you were waiting for an eagle ray or a shark to come by and didn't see them, in which case you may wanna focus on some coral shots or some shots with your dive buddy, or in cases where you have poor visibility on the dive, focus on close focus wide angle. Get in really close to the reef or get in really close to the diver or other photo subjects and really work on controlling those strobes to minimize backscatter in those conditions check out my strobe positioning tutorial if you haven't. Um, and that will allow you to shoot in those, those poor conditions and bring home some wide angle photos. So if you're on that trip, if wide angle is your jam, you love wide angle shooting, you're expecting those big subjects, shoot wide angle. Don't play it safe in that case because if you're set up for macro, you know you're going to see that subject you were hoping to see, that school of sharks or big school of bump head parrotfish or whatever it might be. So. Go ahead, shoot wide angle if you're in a pretty safe place for that. Zoom lenses are the third way to set up your camera when you don't know what type of conditions to expect. Traditionally, a lot of people will talk about macro lenses or fisheye lenses for wide angle, but zoom lenses are a great intermediate option. 
And zoom lenses have been popular for a long time among pool shooters, but also with divers who shoot in variable conditions. My head pops to the Puget Sound, where divers for a long time have used Sigma 17 to 70 lenses behind large dome ports, two 30 millimeter or eight inch, nine inch dome ports, because they've got that versatility in the focal range from 17 mil to 70 mil and their minimum focus distance, that minimum distance they can get to their subject while still achieving sharp autofocus may change depending on the lens. But that zoom range gives you huge versatility in what you're shooting. You can zoom out to shoot a diver over the reef, or you can zoom in all the way to find a giant Pacific octopus nestled in a crack with some eggs, or maybe some shrimp back in a ledge. So that setup is really versatile. I've actually taken to using the Canon 16-35 f4L lens, which is a rectilinear wide angle lens. So it's wide angle, it's great for sharks and whales and things when you don't want to use a fisheye, but that 16-35 to zoom on my full frame is really useful because I can zoom out for big wide angle scenes or I can zoom into 35 and shoot subjects as small as a small anemone in poor visibility or fish portraits. So I can't shoot true macro at a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio like you would with a real macro lens and even go beyond that with a diopter, but I can shoot down to pretty small subjects, which gives me that wide range of photo possibilities and photo options regardless of the dive conditions and visibility. So I find that useful, just like a lot of divers find that 17 to 70 useful. The good news is that with a lot of mirrorless cameras these days, we do have a lot more options with zoom lenses and those housings and their compatibility with ports. So definitely check that out if versatility is something you're looking for in your underwater camera system. The fourth way to set up your camera is with water contact optics. Now these have been known as wet lenses, both macro diopters and wide angle wet lenses through the years, but basically the bottom line is that these can be changed underwater. They attach to the front of your housing port regardless of what lens you have inside. Now these lenses have been available for compact cameras for a very long time because there's no interchangeable lens. So you could pop on a macro diopter or a wide angle conversion lens, um, widening that field of view of the lens out to 120 degrees, which is really useful in a lot of shooting settings and versatile for those compact shooters. They were ready for any situation. Now these lenses are available for interchangeable lens cameras. So mirrorless or DSLR lenses and shooters of these cameras can benefit not just from the versatility of those lenses, but extremely high quality images. There are a variety of manufacturers making high quality optics designed specifically for different fixed focal length lenses. So let's say fixed at 28 millimeters or for lenses that do have zoom capability. So there are a lot of great choices out there. The one thing to keep in mind with these high quality water contact optics is they're generally designed for specific cameras and even lens combinations. So be sure to talk to your local underwater camera retailer or specialist because they'll know how to get you using the right lens for the right camera and port that you have. Oftentimes, because these lenses are pretty expensive, it's something you might not do if you have a system that works, but might be something that you'll look towards as you upgrade camera systems and are looking to invest in lenses and ports once again. That's a great time to explore switching to water contact optics and getting that versatility on your dives when you don't know exactly what to expect. And that's it. Those are four simple approaches to setting up your camera when you don't know what the dive site entails. Like I said before, Definitely talk to your dive guide or your dive instructor or people at the resort who are knowledgeable because they can really help you set up the camera. But when you want to make that decision yourself or you're not quite sure, you can use any of these four techniques based on the region you are or the destination where you're at. If you have any type of questions, leave them below about gear, about diving, or other tutorials or other questions you want answered. Questions, questions, questions. I'm saying that a lot, but put them there. We'll answer them a lot. Make more videos, articles on the website, tutorials.brentdurand.com. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet, and I'll see you in the next video.